Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Michael Dickman. And the networking space is really kind of uh, having to rethink things a little bit with the, uh, the the way everybody is using mobile rather than having a port where they're tied to their desk all the time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. We see a huge shift to the mobile workplace. I think you know it started with wireless overlays, and people said, "Hey." Sometimes I need to use my laptop and I want to go into a conference room and come back and also I have guests coming into my environment. This is where it started. But I think as most viewers will know, we've moved far beyond that. Uh, BYOD is almost ubiquitous. There's, you know, relatively fewer companies have not yet dealt with that. And so we've now got wireless. But I think the next step is how do we move from wireless to mobility? And that's why we're talking more and more about the mobile workplace and the mobile campus. And that's why we're so excited to join with Aruba. So how is uh, kind of the, the mobility factor changing things? Because I mean, I think about I go in if I go into work, um, I probably have um, most days three devices that I'm connecting yeah. wirelessly with, maybe four That's right. on, on different days. But how, how does that change the way uh, a network is architected? Yeah, sure. So that's a great question. I mean, I guess first to back up a little bit, you know, on the three devices piece is some of those are probably yours. And yes, some of, them, some of them are mine. Right? They're not issued by your company. Some of them are issued by your company. I mean, I have the same thing. My phone is mine. I have another phone actually from, uh, from HP, and then I have my laptop from HP. And so I have three devices, but some are BYOD, some are not. Some are relatively more mobile, like roaming uh, voice calls, and some I tend to sit in one place while using it. And so you've got this huge complexity and change in traffic patterns that's going on. So you have explosion of devices, to your point. It's no longer um, whatever it used to be, I don't know. One, one, one desktop, one yeah. attached to one network. Well, it used report. to be one desktop, one person, but it also used to be one, you know, five people for every mobile something, you know, for every wireless device as a rough rule of thumb. Now it's three or four devices for every, uh, for every employee. And so you have the explosion in devices, explosion in mobile traffic. And then the other piece that I just want to address before the infrastructure is what are people doing on the phones? They're not checking email only. They're on voice calls. Soon, uh, they're going to be on video calls, HD streaming video while, while walking around in different environments. And so everything in our lives, including our personal lives, will be rapidly coming in and out of the mobile world. And so we need to have quality, reliability, stability, security for a voice, for video, you know, for all the UC stuff, plus our normal applications and environment. And so to your question on the infrastructure implications is we do have to think about that end to end. It's not as simple as let's make sure we have an access point here so that our device can connect. The question is how do we make sure that the user has a good experience and it's all about user experience. Just like application is king in the data center uh, and in the cloud, user experience is king on the campus and that's actually the last mile of that application experience if you look at it end to end. So in terms of the infrastructure, what we're trying to work together there is the right uh, wireless infrastructure, the right access points. But to have the wired network that sits behind it be built with mobility in mind, and we've done some things at HP to uh, to make that the case, and I can walk through those. Yeah, definitely. Let's, let's, like. let's hear sure. some of those. So the first is, let's think about you know the access points tying into the wired uh, network. Really, less as let's think about it less as wired access and more as wireless aggregation. And what I mean by that is, the ports that are in our wireless uh, are that are in our wired devices now are no longer the gateway for email to one guy on his desktop. That's now potentially a bottleneck for 30 uh, mobile devices who are going through an access point connecting back in there. And so that edge switch role changes dramatically. And you think about how do, you know, what does that actually mean? You know, one thing it means in the world of 802.11ac wave 2 is I'm going to need multi gigabit ethernet. I can't now go with standard gigabit ethernet if I want to get the full value from that new access point wireless infrastructure. And I don't want to be a bottleneck in the future. So that's one thing, it's multi-gigabit ethernet. Another piece is just around, you know, simple as PoE density. In the world that you talked about, you know, let's provision three or four ports per desktop because maybe they've got their computer and their phone and whatever else is going on. Now all of a sudden we've got a huge portion of the devices require PoE because what's left? Access points and IP phones. And yeah, you have printers and other things but you've got a huge need for PoE density, and so that's a second piece. And the third is just performance and reliability. If a port goes down, now all of a sudden you're taking 30 people off uh, versus just one person temporarily. And so you have even a higher bar 
for the stability and quality of that wired infrastructure. So how do you deal with that, that quality piece? Because that seems like, that seems like a, a big uh, potential choke point. Yeah, absolutely. So just to take an example is, um, you know, Microsoft Link. Microsoft is a partner of both, had been for Aruba for a while and also HP. Now Aruba's done some things around how do we optimize and do quality of service over wireless for Microsoft Link and UC and the wireless infrastructure. But if you just take that view, then you miss the wired. And actually you can have problems in the wired infrastructure as we've learned. Now on HP's side, with some of our SDN approaches like our network optimizer application, we, we solve that on the wired side by dynamically creating a QoS policy between one a UC client and another, and then tearing that down when that session is done. But we don't see the wireless side if you don't have you know, HP wireless, which many customers don't. So now we can bridge that end to end. And we can say to your point on that quality, how can I guarantee that you see uh, that call quality? Well, now actually I can. I can give preference and priority in the wireless. I can give the right quality of service over wired. And I can manage that centrally from a policy perspective. So that's a great example of thinking about quality end to end versus siloed. So how is um, kind of this combination of uh, Aruba and, and HP going to change the game for, for the way HP approaches networking? Sure. So, I mean, we're really excited about that combination. Um, I just came from another blogger session, and one of the phrases used there was just a fire in the belly. We have got collectively now, you know, fire in the belly. Aruba has always had this culture. Um, HP, we are really excited to do that. And so part of it is to just go out really aggressively and focus on what does the customer need, how do we build together better solutions that are focused on those customer use cases? So it's not about the technology or about the products, and we will continue to have leading technology, and we will rationalize and streamline our product portfolio. But it's going to be done with that customer use case in mind, and we're focusing 100% on the mobile campus. And so we're going to look at security, visibility, optimization of traffic, end-to-end, -end, wired and wireless. We're also looking at how we enable new experiences with things like location-based services and also new flexibility for IT with software-defined networking. And just taking all that end-to-end, -end, we see a ton of opportunity. Near-term, things like ClearPass, how do we extend that end-to-end? -end? Um, how do we get the best of both in management? And how do we bring those portfolios together? So very excited. All right, I look forward to seeing where things go. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.